What's up guys, boys and girls? I am Russ, I'm with rwgresearch.com and this is my official entry to the Pulse Motor Build-Off. Before I get started, I would like to just say that the main ultimate reason for doing this Pulse Motor Build-Off was because when you do something for such a long time you just, you almost get your head wrapped around it and you almost get lost if you're not careful. You would just get sucked into the world of crazies and uh, so taking a break every once in a while from what you're doing is always a good thing so keep that in mind and that's the main reason for doing this build off now the second thing is hey me and Tin Man we thought it was a good idea so uh, please check out uh, the forums that he has everything will be in the description and also check out our forums and see what's going on there um, kind of teaming up both of us to do what we can and uh, let's get started so my motor is running right now I'm just going to set this camera down and show you what it looks like. It's running on two coils right now. And yes, I did um, actually just start this build the same day I posted that video. Um, about the build off. Everything was built within that time frame and did not have anything else built prior. I basically have a vertical rotor and this vertical rotor is set up similar to a window motor except it has eight poles but I'm still I still have the coils across polarity of, of the coils. Um, so that's what it looks like. Um, I officially unwrapped way too many TVs um, and yeah but it's running. Should be smooth enough I can set this battery up there. It, it's got a tiny bit of vibration um, but that's because when I made these parts, it didn't quite work out the way I would have liked. I'll show you what these parts are. Down here on the bottom, we actually have a tiny shaft going through the center. And then on top of that is a hard drive bearing. And then on top of that is a pressed piece of aluminum that's pressed inside of this brass thing. This used to be a gear a brass gear out of a gearbox and I used to collect these in my old job and turn them into weights and then on top of that is another piece of machined aluminum that the rotor shaft right there is actually pressed into it and then you've got this rotor this rotor actually came out of one of those type of motors right there servo motor from Alan Bradley the uh, old ones actually cost too much to repair so we end up taking them apart and uh, that rotor was actually in there it's got eight poles on it I'll show you what it looks like in a minute then the top is another piece of aluminum that's press fitted into the inside of a hard drive uh, I'm sorry a uh, tape VSH tape head and then that tape head has a collar on it. There's two collars on it. One I'm using as a height gauge. Um, and then that whole assembly is mounted by these three screws right here. Okay. And these three screws are sitting on rubber. You can see them right there. They're sitting on top of rubber um, like grommets. Okay. And those rubber grommets are actually holding that top part of the tape head and everything is being suspended by those two bearings this bearing that's down here in the bottom actually isn't touching anything it's hard to see but it's not touching anything it's actually free floating in there and by chance this thing gets out of whack that will save me from this thing flying apart so instead of all this weight flying around it'll actually bump the bottom you can kind of hear it Okay, so that's what the rotor is. Now the stator and or the coils here, um, I actually unwrapped, I don't know, 6, 12, 
a bunch, like 12 TVs worth of magnet wire. There's some purple wire right there. These are left over. Some copper, some copper, copper, and then more copper. And uh, there was like three, no, there's four more rolls um, that I finished off and or had just a tiny bit left. And so everything that you see here, all of this wire, I mean, you can see how much wire is here. Um, originally, I thought the amount of wire I'd have on here was where that hole's at. And it actually came all the way out to the end of these plates. So right now this thing's actually just running on uh, two coils. Actually, it's running on three. Now it's running on two. And uh, I can get it to run on one as well. Once it's up to speed, you can almost flip, well, you can flip them all but one coil off. And they will still run. Now at the front here, what we have, all right, we'll start up here at the circuits. All right, so for an input trigger, I have that hall sensor for one side of the coils and this hall sensor for the other side of the coils. So each separate set of coils here is driven by a separate circuit. Basically what I have here is two driver circuits. I have an edge triggering circuit which consists of two resistors and a cap. That gives me a nice square wave. Uh, it's actually just a weird funky wave and uh, I would show you except for my oscilloscope quit working. Yay. I uh, damaged it while I was soldering. Uh, something shorted out through my soldering iron and blew up my scope. So I'm out. I cannot show you the circuit functioning on there. But uh, anyway, we have a 555 timer here and it's set up as a as a uh, A stable and I'm triggering it and uh, I believe it's an A stable. I might have that wrong. Anyway, I'm triggering with that edge trigger and it is giving me an output pulse. Now I can change the pulse by changing this potentiometer. And the reason I wanted to do that is because when this gets triggered, it's on for a certain amount of time and I wanted to be able to make the time shorter and shorter and shorter and that's what I can do with these potentiometers. Alright, so that 555 timer is driving a TLP250 uh, and TLP250 is driving all six channels and uh, that works actually really well. The MOSFETs drivers usually can handle a couple of MOSFETs and I'm driving six with no problem. I think that chip can handle one and a half amps. So I should be able to drive a whole bank of these things with no problem. So down here, I have my bank of MOSFETs. All right, I have one meg ohm pull up resistors. Actually, they're pull down resistors. Um, I guess I need to show you this real quick. Each channel, each gate channel is ran through a dip switch. All right, so I can turn on and off whatever coils I would like. Uh, the high powering still stays connected, but the low um, trigger gate gets turned on or off. Okay. Um, so basically, I have these resistors pull up. Now, excuse me, pull down resistors, so that when I turn that off, in case it was left high, it would go low, and the MOSFET will turn off. Now. I have these LEDs on here, they're not doing anything. Um, internally, these MOSFETs have uh, diodes across them to protect them. And so these LEDs are extra diode protection, um, even though they probably wouldn't do anything if they went off. I put them on there anyway, and I just left them on there. Now uh, I was uh, about through this project out the window about six times during this build, and that's not an exaggeration. I just kept having these little problems. Um, so anyway, I finally did finish it and I ended up burning up yesterday when I got this thing done. I ended up burning up four of these MOSFETs, had to replace them all. And then just before I got ready to videotape this, I tried to solder something down here, shorted it out, had to replace it. So um, my, my original goal, I actually got this done yesterday, which I was surprised. I'm a day ahead and uh, that was pretty cool. But uh, so it took me not quite two weeks to build. Um, but basically the, the MOSFETs, the way they're designed, I'm having a hard time using this motor for EMF charging and um, or the CEMF or BEMF, whichever one you would like to call it. The uh, high voltage spike that comes off the coil when it uh, is released from its uh, applied voltage. And originally I uh, thought I could get some good charging off this thing, but because I was using the MOSFETs I was having a trouble and I didn't quite get done and I decided just to let it go. 
and uh, it's functioning, it's working, it does its thing. I'm happy with that. Now, um, before I forget, I, I don't know if I explained this, but I, I mounted these on this rubber base that can move. And um, I basically did that because the piece between here and this rotor, the press fit right there is barely unsquare. And so this allows this whole thing to, to wobble like this, and then because I have this weight at the bottom, it just balances out and I don't have to worry about anything. So, there it is! Russ's uh, entry for the 2012 Pulse Motor Build-Off competition. Um, we will be doing more competitions like this. It's really fun. Um, definitely a little more ground rules and maybe a little more thought out. And uh, You know, if we had a, a sponsor, thanks to Kyle for donating a first prize gift, uh, that's, a, that's amazing. But uh, if we had a couple sponsors that were willing to donate a couple really cool gifts, um, we could build more and have a little more fun. Um, it's definitely worth doing. You know, you got to take a break from what you're doing every once in a while and just enjoy what it is that's going on in life and uh, building this pulse motor. It was pretty fun. So, what I'm going to do is turn all the coils on. You can hear it speeding up. I'm going to let it speed up. It might start getting a little vibration. I'm going to let it speed up and show you what the RPM is. Here's the, uh, here's the other wire that I have left off the uh, rest of the TVs. The air speeding up. And uh, I'll check it here. Got a little piece of tape on here. at 6,000 RPM right now. I got it up to... Actually, that's about the highest I've ever got it. Or maybe not. I thought I had it up to 7,000. It's speeding up. But, uh... It gets to going. I thought I got up to th uh, 7,000 something, 7.5 maybe, and uh, it works pretty well. Now all of these coils come back to these connector blocks, and you're not going to be able to see the connector blocks, but all the uh, all the wiring's hidden back there. It comes comes down the side here and around it. That's that's all the wire. If I can get it focused right there. So there it is, um, and yeah, cool. I uh, I learned a lot from this. Um, I really did. See, I just turned off the two main power coils, the two bigger coils, and uh, it's still cruising right along. I can turn off uh, two of the bigger coils, and then I've got I've got three like tw number twenty six. AWG, uh, one probably number 22, and one maybe number 20. Uh, they, the number 20, the big purple one here, is actually aluminum. And then on the very end, I've got a teeny tiny little bitty wire right there. I just happened to be able to unwind them, so I went ahead and, and used them. But uh, you can hear it slowing down a little bit. because I turned off all the main coils, but you can get this thing to hum right along. Um, I'll go ahead and check the current for you. Just to, uh, just to show you what I got. I get this connected correctly. So, I can get this to run on less current at a lower RPM. And uh, it works quite well. That's just one coil. If I turn all the coils on, okay, even with all the coils on, 
I can get it down to under half amp. And that's not bad. I mean, you got to remember this thing was a, a trial and error design. And the controls definitely could be changed. Now, what's interesting is my trigger. Okay. I'll go ahead and turn these back off and let this thing settle down see what we get. Okay. Now, what was interesting is, depending on the capacitor for my edge triggering, this thing would actually limit itself. So what would happen is that the, the signal coming in would get distorted. And it would get so distorted that the output of the 555 timer would quit working. So this thing would just, just hum right along at probably about 3000 RPM. Uh, no vibration, you couldn't even hear it running. And um, it just it just buzzed right along, and it just kept oscillating between on off, on off, on off. It would basically instead of like pulse, 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 it was like pulse, skip a couple, pulse, skip a couple, and it would actually regulate itself and even regulate the input. Um, now, if you're using this for back EMF charging, eh, it wouldn't really work. But um, for uh, for what I was doing, I don't know. It's, I, I may switch back and play with that because it was pretty cool. The current would drop down to, to basically only what the thing's pulling when the circuits are on, which is uh, about 337 milliamp. If I turn my two bigger power coils on, I'm already up to a half amp. If I turn just some of my smaller coils on, drop to about 200, 300 milliamp. And I can sit here all day and play with this, but uh, I, I think I actually might switch these back because what happens is it was like self-regulating, but never really slowed down or sped up. It just stayed there, but it still triggered every once in a while. It was pretty efficient that way. So anyway, there was Russ's Pulse Motor Build-Off Entry 2012. I hope you like it. And uh, leave me a comment. I'll try to reply to it. I'll go ahead and post some pictures of the building process over at the thread, uh, the forums. And yeah, so I hope you like, oh, I guess I'll stop it and show you what it looks like. Go ahead and, uh, this thing will spin for like eight minutes at that fast of an RPM. It'll just sit here and spin. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. So now you can see this is just the VCR head and then that rotor in there. Sorry, I, I got this thing so far into the table I'm having a hard time getting my camera on. Oh, there we go. Now I can get closer. So this is actually a strip of a curved magnet right here. And then I got that brass wheel on there. Now I can, uh, can lay this back. Let's see, I'll just lay it over like this. And this whole entire assembly is just sitting on here. Okay, you see that? I don't sort of see, but right there it's not attached. It's just sitting in this pinhole right here. But you can see that it's not attached at all. So that just sits in that pinhole and that's all it does is keep it steady so all the weights actually on the top bearing here so you can see and then this this can be uh, let's get out of it. this just floats see that so it can float on those rubber bushings and then the bottom it literally doesn't hit anything see what kind of place got so pretty cool. I uh, put my little terminal connectors over here. I know it's kind of weird, but I was having a problem where I want to put my stuff. And if I turn this all the way over, I'll go ahead and set my camera back down. Get it going here.
you can hear a little vibration as it gets to going. Now you can just sit here and tune it. Once you get it going, you can turn on all the power coils and just get it going on. You can actually just move it, keep it going on just one, one individual coil. So this one now it does nothing. And it's going to slow down, but it'll just, finally it'll just settle out. And it'll just sit there, and it'll just cruise along. So there you go. Awesome. Hope you guys like it. And, uh, I, uh, can't tell I spent a lot of time on it. I mean, a lot of time. Um, probably more than you could ever imagine. But uh, I had fun. I really did. I uh, got a little mad here and there at a few things that didn't work out and, uh, you know, just set it aside for a little bit and came back to it and kept on chucking along. Now, I'm sweating out here. It is really hot. But, ugh. one thing I want to tell you, I do have, since I got three days, I've got another motor I want to build. Something that I really, truly think will be super efficient. Don't know if that'll be the case. That was the reason I built this, but it didn't work out that way. But by, uh, by the official rules, I have to show you. So this is all I got so far. It's a VCR head with four magnets pressed in it. So I got three days. Actually, I really only got two because I'll be at work Sunday night. Ew. So that's it. Um, thank you for everyone who entered. Awesome. I'm going to actually make another video of everybody's stuff and post it on my channel so everybody will get, uh, get some cool uh, clips of their pulse motor build off in entry in there. I'll probably do that maybe a week after. Uh, actually, I'll probably do that whenever I show the results. Uh, really quickly, I did want to tell you there will be one more judge. I told you there was three judges, um, the two wives, and there will be one more technical person out there. So. There'll be a, a technical judge out there as well. So that's it. Before I sweat to death out here, this is Russ, rwgresearch.com, and check out uh, Tin Man's form. I don't want to say it wrong. I think it's uh, I-A-E-C. So, yeah, this is uh, Russ, and I uh, hope you guys have a good day, and I'll talk to you later. See ya. Well, as usual, I forgot to tell you something. Uh, I wanted to quickly mention that everything in this entire unit that you see is completely recycled. Um, I did not pay a penny for anything. Everything was use of the material I had. Um, this this plexiglass, it's kind of frosted. That was actually plexiglass that was like twice as old as I am. And uh, the plexiglass, I what I did is it used to be brown, nasty brown. Um, and uh, I had a little scrap piece and I was able to make this entire thing out of that scrap piece. Um, including my uh, my wire holders there, you can see how they're they're notched out, and they've got uh, got the slots and everything cut in them. But uh, everything was scrap, and the reason it's frosted is because it used to have like a brown sh cover on it, and I just took a razor blade and I I frosted the whole thing like that. So anyway, I just wanted to quickly show you that. All right now it's just running on one coil, just plugging away. And uh, hope you have a good day, guys. Uh, if I look tired, it's because I am. Yay! Been going for too many hours, but well worth it. I had a lot of fun. Peace out, guys. Talk to you soon. Can't wait for Sunday.